Hello folks, this is Gerwin Jones, this is The Shooting Show. We are in the Thames Valley for a change, uh, roosting, tonight roost shooting pigeons in this here little wood. We're under the lee of a hill, it's blowing an absolute gale at the moment, you couldn't tell that from where we're sat right now, but we're in the lee of the wind here, we're out of it. So, set up a little hide just in off the edge of the wood. All the pigeons I was watching last night have been flying up on the lee out of the wind, so we're going to Start off doing that, put a few birds up in the trees, some lofters, and then if that doesn't work, we'll just walk, Jonathan and I will just walk into the middle of the wood and standing a little clearing and try and shoot them coming up the wood. But I think <clears throat> the way the wind is today, it's slightly different to yesterday when I was watching it. It's a bit more northerly in it. Um, so I think they'll still come up this outside edge. But anyway, if they don't, they don't, we'll just move. And take, but we've just put the hide up just in case. So it's four o'clock now. We've got plenty of time. Nothing's gonna happen for a while but just figured let's get down here, let's get set up and um, look at it, glorious day to be out but uh, like I said, not so glorious the other side of the wood, it is blowing a gale Chaos. Right, one, two, three. One, two, three, four. I'm gonna get one of those um Hill. Hill. roosting tonight but not in the traditional sense uh, they fly up this wood it's quite a low wood as you can see and a lot of pigeons come in here every night now we're in the middle of all these storms that are going on Eugenie and God knows what so in the middle of the wood there's a lovely clearing where I normally go I watched it last night and because of the way the wind is and the strength of it the birds are actually coming up the outside of the wood and they're coming up the wind, up the wind, up the wind, and they're dropping in this end of the wood, which I find quite bizarre because it's really windy and it's not actually that protected. But like I said, I watched it yesterday and it was blowing a hoolie. So I was stood parked up for an hour or so at the other end of this field. And these trees here, as you can see, they're just slightly out of the wind and they were full. They were absolutely full of pigeons. And what happened, I watched it. Four or five came and settled in these outside trees here and then every pigeon that came along the wood ended up coming to this part and just followed them up. So I'm thinking, okay, let's just put some lofters up. They'll probably blow out to be honest, but let's just see what happens. Like these trees on the edge here, we're out of the wind again. So we're just in the lee of the wind. And what I'm thinking is we'll just go in this, I made a little hide. So Jonathan and I can go in that and we'll just come up. I'm hoping they'll just cut over this corner and we hopefully intercept them sort of on this bit of grass where we are here now as crossers. And of course, if they go up behind us, we can see them as well. If that doesn't work, we'll just abandon the hide and we'll walk into the middle of the wood to the clearing where I know I've shot lots of, of, of um, birds coming up in the past. Uh, you can't shoot a roost wood too many times, two or three times a year is plenty. Uh, otherwise they just disappear. But um, we'll see what happens. But like I said, the famous last words, but quite a few came up here last night. place to go and say okay let's go Thank <laughs> you. 
just you need to get a few under your belt. Oh yeah. You overlead them after the fezzies. But in this wind, well, we got one mate anyway. Here we go. Here's the Watch that left one. Been in the hide five minutes. Killed two, missed one. And they've come pretty much as we wanted. Nice killable height. Just randomly coming over the trees, minding their own business. Then they see us and flare off. But the sun is right on us. If they come in like they did then, you get shots like that, we're in business. So much food. And again. Lovely. Should we come in now, John? So we're out this afternoon and we're going to try and shoot as many of these pigeons as we can because these are really doing damage further up on the estate on some rape. So the price that oilseed rape is right now is absolutely through the roof. So the pigeons are going to be doing millions and millions of pounds worth of damage throughout the country right now on uh, winter rape. It won't many beach masts around this winter there were hardly any acorns it wasn't a big natural amount of food for the pigeons so they've absolutely hammered the rape this year all over the country from one end to the other i've been shooting them on the rape fields during the day when i've had a chance and obviously i've got this wood down here where they come in to roost well spotted mate well spotted anyway Gerwin just checking his uh, shot cam to see where he missed. It'd be quite interesting to see. Left, <laughs> <laughs> uh, left, left. No, left. no he's going to come. Just landed, didn't he? Here we go, here we go, this will go. Landing in. Sorry. It's good, there's we'll a good few we'll, in front of us. We'll get a shot in a minute and then we should get a second shot. So there's some landed 30 yards down in front of us. We just saw the silhouette through the trees. So we'll see in a minute, we should get a shot. One's even coming to Left, 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 left. Yeah, Straight well, over. Well spotted. That's blue rock. That was in front. I should have waited for him to come. Ooh, you bugger. Ooh, you bugger. And again. That was a friggin' long magpie. <laughs> That was probably the best left and right uh, magpie I've seen going. Well done, mate. Here we go, Pidge coming. That long, that second magpie was a long way, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's magpies. So we're just going to nip. We've been on the edge here for a little while now and we can see pigeons further down in the wood and they're dropping in before they get to us but actually look up here mate this is where they are <laughs> oh 
I think we might have, spo <laughs> might have spoken too soon. <laughs> I think we nearly made the wrong decision then. There's a lot of pigeons in the sky then. <laughs> What we may have happening here is they might be dropping in the bottom end of the wood and even though our shots will keep them moving, they'll just settle back in. And when they see another bird, a bird obviously in a tree, they'll just they'll just flock towards it. So we shall see. But we've had a nice few shots already. Coming up the wood, but if they come. They've dived in, they've landed. These are going to come, I think. I followed them ones. Here we are. <laughs> oh, way in front. Both times, wasn't it? Here we go, here we go. Yeah. Word. Lines of them. That's it. I'm in front of a mate. Okay, that's it. We're going to call it a night. We've had a fun hour or so here. I don't know what we shot. 20 or so jumps on the like I suppose. Yeah. Been really good. Really, really good. We're going to have a little pick up now. They came not in masses of numbers. We were just about to think actually we'll go and move. And then about 200 flipping came off the top of the hill up where the rape fields are and just basically descended on us in one hit, followed by another big gang followed by another big gang so we, we tripped we tickled away prior to that and then they all came in it was fast and furious then for the last sort of 10 minutes but that's roost shooting really good fun missed a few hit some memorable ones and like we said crop protection again back good girl So, guys, as we were saying earlier in the film, this is the reason why we need to control these brave marauders. So, this is crop. You look at this now. Look at that, guys. Just look at that. Stuffed. Absolutely stuffed. 
each bird is eating that twice a day. Feed in the morning, go and digest. Feed in the morning, go and digest. More food. Thanks very much for watching guys. This was The Shooting Show. I'm Gerwin Jones. See you on the next one. So this week, I'm taking a look at the Pulsar front-mounted F455. This is a great little unit, this. It's a night vision unit, and it's a simple add-on to a normal day scope. Now, it's very similar to the bigger brother of this, which is the Krypton, which is the thermal unit. Now, the lovely thing about this unit is it's on a bayonet fitting which allows you to quickly remove that and reattach it so that just goes on your scope which locks on like so and slides on and off so you attach that and I'd normally just leave that on there and then all you've got to do is just clip that into place like so now Basically what this does is it converts a standard day scope into a night vision scope. So this unit also records, it's got a built in infrared illuminator which will illuminate out to probably around about 200 yards. One thing I did find though with using the onboard illuminator, it does drain the battery a little bit quicker. So I would recommend using an uh, aftermarket infrared unit with this. You'll also get a lot more performance from it, so you'll be able to see a lot further and it'll sharpen the picture up a little bit clearer as well. So focusing is by this little knob on the top here. You'll first obviously need to focus your scope, your normal day scope, to the unit itself and then adjust the fine focus on here, on the unit. So the unit runs on a standard Pulsar IPS7 battery, which simply mounts on the side. Power buttons at the front here, record, and your menu button, and your magnification. What I did find with this unit is it does add a little bit of weight to your rifle, but that's a trade-off though for the convenience of having a simple add-on device like this. So I actually had the earlier model to this, the F155. Uh, I actually bought that unit myself and uh, used it for quite a while. Um, but uh, I have to say the new model, the F455, has um, it's certainly an improvement on the 155, a lot clearer, so much better picture. And they've also improved the IR as well, they've modified that slightly. Being that the unit's mounted forward of the scope, you don't actually see the crosshairs when you record any footage using this unit. To record footage and see the crosshairs, you'd have to put something on the back of the scope, perhaps like a tax cam or something like that, to allow you to record that sort of footage. Another great advantage of using a system like this is it still allows you to use all the functions of your normal day scope. So you can uh, adjust your elevation and windage, and you can also use, if you've got one, an illuminated crosshair on there. So this unit works with any day scope. You can buy different attachments to fit that on there as long as you've got the clearance underneath. Um, if you haven't, then this can be uh, overcome by uh, using some higher scope mounts. This unit also comes with a remote control which can be attached to the stock and allows you to easily from a shooting position adjust the main controls of the unit. So another nice thing about this type of unit is it doesn't extend the rear of the scope so it's not like a rear add-on which has a tendency to bring your head back on the stock. This maintains a nice comfortable shooting position and a nice clear picture. So with this unit simply clamping on the front there and locking on, it doesn't affect your point of impact, so there's no need to re-zero every time you want to use it. So all in all, this makes a really good option for anyone that doesn't want to necessarily change their day scope over for a night vision scope. Um, this simple add-on just means you can have the best of both worlds, and certainly at its price, I think that's a pretty good unit.